We have quite a beautiful structure in front of us. It's the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times the square of the logarithm of x. And the inspiration for this integral came from another one that I solved. It was the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared times log x dx. So yeah, all I did was take the square and take it to the logarithm term instead of the uh, argument of the exponential function. And it turns out this had an extremely beautiful result. It was a very satisfying evaluation and an absolutely beautiful and amazing result. Now what exactly is this beautiful integration result? Well, you're going to have to wait till the end of the video to find out. So we're going to call our integral i for reference purposes as always. And to evaluate it, I'm going to define an integral function i of some parameter t as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times x to the t dx, which we know and love as the gamma function. Now this would be the gamma function evaluated at t plus 1. And you may ask, why would I define the integral function in this manner? Well, that's quite simple. If you take this x to the t term and you differentiate it partially with respect to t, then you get x to the t times the logarithm of this constant base x. So this implies that the second derivative with respect to t of x to the t should be equal to, differentiating this again gives you x to the t times log x, and you have this constant log x term already being multiplied. So that gives you the square of the natural logarithm of x. So all you have to do is plug in t equal to 0, you get x to the 0 which is 1, and you recover this squared logarithm function for the target integral. So that's the, uh, that's the motivation behind defining the integral function in this manner. Now the other motivation for defining this structure for the integral function was the involvement of the gamma function and viewers of the channel know that I love employing the gamma function and differentiating the gamma function gives me the opportunity to use the digamma function and of course we're going to have to differentiate the integral function twice to get this squared logarithm term so I'm going to use the trigamma function as well so stay tuned for that. Anyway. It's time to differentiate this integral function with respect to the parameter t. And for the domain of the gamma function, we know that the integral converges. So we can, in fact, perform the switch up of the integration and the differentiation operators. And because of the switch up, the total derivative with respect to t becomes a partial one. So you have the partial derivative with respect to t of e to the negative x times x to the t. And this gives us e to the negative x because we're holding the x terms constant times the derivative of x to the t which is of course x to the t times log x dx and that is the first derivative with respect to t and differentiating this again will of course give me the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x times x to the t times the square of the logarithm of x and we're interested in the case of t being equal to zero, right? So our target integral is in fact this, uh, the second derivative of the integral function at t equal to zero. And this here equals the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x times log square x dx. But we also know that the integral function was also defined in terms of the gamma function. I of t was in fact gamma t plus one, correct? So that means the second derivative of I with respect to t is the second derivative of the gamma function at t plus one. So that means the second derivative at zero equals the second derivative of the gamma function at one. Okay, nice. So that means what we're looking for now is the second derivative with respect to uh, t of the gamma function at 1. And what exactly is this value? Well, we're going to have to invoke the digamma function here first. Uh, the digamma function 
psi z is defined as the derivative of the gamma function at the complex number z divided by gamma z. So this implies that the derivative of the gamma function equals di gamma z times gamma z. And if we differentiate this expression with respect to z once more, this gives us the second derivative of the, di of the uh, gamma function with respect to z being equal to uh, the derivative of the gamma function, of the di gamma function with respect to z, which we know and love as the tri gamma function or psi sub 1 of z times gamma z plus di gamma z times gamma prime z. And we're interested in the case of z being equal to 1. So we need the tri gamma function evaluated at 1 times gamma 1 plus di gamma 1 times gamma prime 1. Now evaluating these derivatives is the fun part of the video. So we know that the gamma function is defined as gamma z being equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times t to the z minus 1 dt. And differentiating this with respect to z and once again performing the switch up of the differentiation and the integration operators, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to z of e to the negative t times t to the z minus 1 dt. And because we're differentiating partially with respect to z, the t terms are constant. So we have this constant e to the negative t, constant in the z world that is, times t to the z minus 1 times the logarithm of this constant base t. Okay, nice. And remember, we were interested in the derivative of the gamma function at z being equal to 1. So gamma prime 1 equals the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t times t to the 0. t to the 0 is 1, of course, times log t dt. And this here is the integral representation of the order Mascheroni constant, the negative of the order Mascheroni constant, that is. Okay, that is pretty damn cool. Okay, so we know that this here evaluates to the negative of the order Mascheroni constant, and the gamma function at 1 is just 1, of course. So that's done and dusted with. But what about the tri gamma and the di gamma functions at 1? Well, I can answer both questions using the series representation of the di gamma function, which is really cool. Di gamma z plus 1 being equal to negative order mascheroni plus the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by k minus 1 by k plus z. So if I need di gamma 1, all I need to do is plug in z being equal to 0. So I have negative order mascheroni constant plus the sum over k of 1 by k minus 1 by k plus 0 is just 1 by k. So that cancels out. You have a 0 here, and this implies that di gamma 1 equals the negative of the order mascheroni constant. And now what about the tri gamma function? Well, for that, all I have to do is differentiate this with respect to z, and I get tri gamma z plus 1 being equal to, this is a constant, so the derivative vanishes, the sum over the positive integers k. This 1 by k term is independent of z, so again, zero derivative, and the derivative of negative 1 by k plus z would be 1 by k plus z squared, where the two negatives cancel out. So again, plugging in z equal to 0 gives me tri gamma 1 being equal to the sum over k of 1 by k squared, which we know as the Basel problem. So we have pi squared by 6. A beautiful result indeed. This itself is a beautiful result. And this implies that the second derivative of the gamma function at 1 equals, now what exactly did we have here? We had di gamma 1. Uh, tri gamma 1 that is and tri gamma 1 is of course pi squared by 6 and then we had this other term as well di gamma 1 now this here was negative order mascheroni and this here is negative order mascheroni as well so multiply them out you get positive order mascheroni squared so this is it this is the second derivative of the gamma function of 1 and we know that this is in fact the 
second derivative of the integral function at t equal to zero, which is of course our target integral that is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x times log uh, the square of the logarithm of x dx. And this gives a beautiful result indeed. It's uh, order mass only constant squared plus pi squared by six. So yeah, I hope you found the wait till the end worth the result. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.